So now we can go and we'll go ahead and do a character preset. For the character preset, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. In fact, I'm going to start a little bit. Bring in a fresh Genesis 3 male. And I'm going to go ahead and apply the morphs that I want to be in effect. I want the control dial to be in effect. And I want him to load with his navel on because most characters do. And I want him to have the realistic mouth. So I'm going to go find that you know, face. I'm going to turn on Mouth Realism HD. So I want those morphs, when they're currently used, I want all those morphs to, to be applied when he loads in. I also want him to load in with his name. His name is Bob. And now I'm going to go ahead and save out a character preset. You just save out a character preset, pretty much like it sounds. I'm going to save that back here under Characters, because that's where most character presets get saved. They all show up in a group for people who are browsing the library. It makes it nice to find them. So we're just going to save that out. Only... I tried to save it under the same name as the folder, so it opened the folder instead. So I got to go Bob Duff so that it knows it's a file, not a folder. I'm going to save that out. So now the only things I have to do is I forgot to apply the material. So now I have Bob with all the morphs that I want applied when he loads. His name is Bob, and he's got his texture on him. So now I'm going to save out the character preset right. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make morph icons and and a thumbnail real quick. We'll show you a thumbnail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find a pose, the gen generic pose to use for the morph icons. I'm going to use that pose because he looks goofy. I'm going to use that pose because he doesn't look quite as goofy. And morph icons, we'll do the thumbnail first. Yeah, let's do the thumbnail first. I'm going to go into render settings, make sure I got rendered. The, the render engine is the right engine. Right, right there. Make sure it's the right render engine. I'm going to turn off of those thumbnails. Thumbnails are 91 by 91, but tip thumbnails can be up to 256 by 256. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go. There it is. I'm going to go custom. I'm going to make that 256 by 256. And I'm going to find a nice, happy spot to do my thumbnail. Now we're going to try and get rid of some of that dead eye look he's got going on. We'll just give him a quick little expression. We'll make him a little triumphant. He's happy he's almost done. He's smiling. That looks scary. Maybe a little less triumphant. Maybe he's surprised. No. Maybe he's suspicious. Oh, here we go. There he is. Sorry, guys. Yep, that's Bob right there. All right. So the checker positioning. Make him bigger. There we go. Make him smaller. There we go. Somewhere in the middle. There we are. All right. I'm just gonna render that out. And we're gonna wait a moment. And it's rendered. We're back. So right now I've got the folder path. Um, pretty close. So I'm just going to go ahead and change the path to where I actually want it to save, which is going to be under characters. And then I'm going to give it the name that matches the character, which is Bob. Apparently I couldn't remember that or how to spell that. So now over here we've got Bob. Get rid of that one there. That's extra. So we got Bob. There's 256 by 256. We need to go and resize that. I'm going to do that with my handy dandy paint program. I'm going to do this first. I'm going to get a copy of it. I'm going to name that copy tip PNG. That way it'll be the tip thumbnail. And that's the larger one. This one here I've got to resize though. And to do that I'm going to go ahead and not that yet. I'm going to go ahead and grab that, drop it in as a new file, image, resize it to 91 by 91. And then I'm going to save that back out. We'll come back to that one in a minute. So now I've got my two thumbnails. There's the 91 by 91. There's 256 by 256. And if I look at my content library, you can see there's that. And if I hover, you get the bigger one. I'm going to go ahead and do morph icons now. And to do morph icons, first, if you don't already have it, you're going to want to go get go get I've lost lost the spot right there it is 
and I broke it. You're going to want to go find it. It's at this page right here. I'll put that link in the description. It's over there in the in the documentation center. And what you're looking for is that guy right there. If you don't have a copy of that, just grab that, drag that over somewhere so that you'll have a copy of it to use whenever. Take that copy, throw it into your image editor right there and you can see that it's telling you it should be 147 by 185 so I'm going to go ahead in here and I'm going to change my render settings to 147 by 185 there and I think I'm going to go ahead and leave that position for the head yeah I'll leave that position for the head we're going to render two times here we're going to render one for the head we're going to render one for the body and the control and we're going to wait for this to finish rendering here any second now. Alright, so I went ahead and rendered the body. Um, dial while I was at it, the control dial. I'm going to go ahead and name that. And I changed my paths and I'm saving them back here in the, the data folder alongside the morphs themselves. And you can see that right there. There's the control, there's the head that I already did. I went ahead and threw a shirt on it because it was weirding me out. And I think. I think the other ones, nope, the other ones don't have shirts. For the females, they have to have shirts, though, because we need to keep it family friendly. Um, back to the image editor. So I've got that image in there. I'm going to grab these two here, drag them into my image editor. And then I'm going to make a copy of that, paste them as a new layer, flip the layers around. I'm going to do the other one first. I want the head morph to fit inside that box because that box is where the dial is. I want it to look nice and pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and do some resizing here. And depending on your image editor, I'm holding on the Alt key while I grab that corner button there, and it keeps things keeps the same. What's that called? A ratio. So I'm going to go ahead, get it there, and I want it positioned inside the box. That works. I'm going to take my eraser tool and zoom in some more and just erase off that bottom line there because you want to keep them again inside the box. If he does extend out of the box he can extend out the top, he can extend out the side over here if you want him to. Um, usually the full body morphs do. Um, but you always want him to end there at the bottom at least. Um, that way it looks like he's standing in the frame and, and coming out of it. I'm going to hide that and then save right over the uh, original. And then this one here this one here, I think I'm going to kind of duplicate from here. This one I'm going to duplicate real quick. I'm going to try to remember how to duplicate with this. Okay, I'm not going to duplicate. So this one here, I'm just going to go ahead and I like his size. And this is going to be my control dial, so I'm just going to go and scoot him over a little bit so he's not completely blocking the dial over there. The control dial guy, he can stick out on the side over here, he can stick out on the top. Don't want him sticking out on the bottom. Here's what I'm going to do duplicate. There. Hide that one. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and erase him from the bottom because you don't want him sticking out over the bottom. Hide the template and save it right back over itself. And I'm going to switch to the other one. I'm going to position this one a little bit differently because this is the f I'm going to do the full body morph with this one here. So I'm just going to bring nothing because I'm on the wrong copy. There we go. So I'm going to bring him up a little bit as high as I can so I can just cut his head off and try not to get his mouth in there. But it looks like that's all I can fit, so that's what I'll do. And I'll just take and cut off there because that's where the full body morphs get cut off at. Alright, everything else is still inside, so I'm going to hide that. And this one I'm going to save under a different name. And that name, of course, is going to be full body morph. No, because at the last second I noticed it was going to save it as a JPEG. There. And of course, full body morph. Now I've got those, so I'm going to go ahead and to do that. Restore the figure. And I'm going to go find my morphs here. I'm just going to do it this way. Bob. And all. I got all the morphs at once. 
and back into edit mode. I'm not in the scene tab or the parameter tab. All right, there, there. Now into edit mode. So I'm going to go ahead and add a card. The cards are the little ones. The the icons are the small ones. You can have separate ones for these these ones that show up large in the shaping tab. Um, or you can just use a large one and it'll resize them for when the dial is smaller. But I'm just going to use the card because that's that's the big one. It's the one that I have. And this is the body, so I'm going to put the body dial there. And you can see it's updated. And I'm going to do the head. And now I just need to go in and resave those dials so that it'll remember. And I'm just going to go save as, morph, support assets, morph assets, make sure I'm saving it to the right location. And again, I'm going to use the same product name. I don't want I don't want the separate copy. So in case I'd forgotten that his name was Bob, I'm just going to find it, copy it, paste it. And there's Bob, so we're going to go find those morphs again. There's one under full body. There's Bob's body. And there's one under head, and it's Bob's head, and there's one under people, and that's Bob. So now when I load it in, um, or when, when anybody loads it in, it's going to come in and have the morph icons there. At this point, the only thing you would have left to do is to uh, save out the rest of the presets here. You want to do thumbnails for them, and clean up those thumbnails, of course and then you'd be ready to go. And that's all there is to making a character in 45 minutes or less.